Welcome back for the last part of One Man's Faith today. We're looking at Hebrews 4 and entering into his rest. It's an important concept here. We have got to understand that if we are in, if we are being disobedient, we're living in unbelief or disbelief of God. If we believe, then we'll follow and we'll understand that what he has said to us, he will do. Okay, that's where we need to be. We need to be at that point. Listen, God has so much for you, but he's waiting for you to come into a relationship with him. And we do that by getting into his word, knowing who he, who he is, loving him, talking to him, and be, being obedient to him. And so, and so the writer of Hebrews says, let us fear, least while there's a promise of entering, we miss it. You see, as long as it is today, you can call out to God. And that's what, that's what it comes down to. He says in verse 7, again, he fixes a certain day today. Every day is today. Every day you have the opportunity to get your life right with him and walk with him. And enter into that rest. You see, that rest is coming. And we start to feel it. We start to be a part of it when we accept him as Lord and we walk in his ways. The total rest for us will come when he comes back or we go to heaven. But if we're not careful, we can fall into disbelief. And that's what he's saying here. He says... The word that they heard, they being Israel, heard, did not profit them. The word they heard was, you follow me, I'm taking you out of the world and into the promised land. We have that same promise given to us. He takes us out of the world and he places us in his kingdom with all his promises, which are his promised land, you see? Because it was not united by faith, in those who heard. They didn't believe. I mean, they came to a point where they had no water, so what did they do? They grumbled that they didn't have water. We come to a point where we think something's going to happen, and when it doesn't, we grumble instead of waiting for God to complete what He said He'd do. You see, you can't go through this on your timetable. Remember, God's timetable is different. I think I've told you before, but if you'll take, uh, there's one place given to us where it says, to the Lord, a thousand years is as one day. Okay? If you'll break that down, a thousand years is as one day. You'll find that one hour of our time equals 41 years based on that. One hour, one minute is four months. I believe that's right. One second is four days. So if God says, wait a second, Now, you take that. You can take that 1,000 years and you can break it down into days, hours, minutes, and seconds. And you'll see that it's, that, that it's very possible. You see, that gives us an idea of God's timetable. And we're on McDonald's time. We expect it. What is it, uh, E.F. Hutton? It's my money. I want it now. You see, we're in a now society. Instead of waiting on God, they, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah tells us that. Isaiah 41. If you wait upon the Lord, you see, we've got to learn that, that we can that it's not supposed to be a time of anxiousness, but a time of waiting and patience for God to move. 
He said he would move. He will move. Well, I don't know if I've heard God. Then start to learn. We can hear God. We've just thrown so much stuff at our heads that it, 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 it drowns out God's voice. And we have had it go on for so long a period of time, it is hard sometimes to hear God because we don't recognize it. Well, the way to recognize it is to start to put those things away, spend time in His Word, take an hour, read, and then sit and wait and say, Lord, what do you have for me out of this? Show me. Learn to start to pray for a half hour at a time. Try that. You know, that's, it's hard to do if you're not used to it. But let's start to spend time. Learn to allow Him to speak to you. You hear it and you run with it. The other place you hear Him is in His Word, okay? His Word tells us many things. His promises are in here. This Word says that His, his promises are yes and amen. And this is another way you can hear him. What is written in here is for you. He goes on and he says um, in verse 4, I like this. He says, and he has said somewhere <laughs> more abundantly. That's what God wants. He wants us to rest in Him. See, if we'll, if we'll understand this, even in Matthew 6, He says, listen, the birds don't worry about what they eat. The flowers don't worry about what they put on. He says, are you not much more than they? Be anxious for nothing. Seek first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he says, all these things will be added unto you. Do you hear that? But you've got to trust him. Now, I'm not saying go out and quit your job, but what I'm saying is that as you do your job, say, Father, is this what you want me to do? Father, they're doing something here that doesn't look right to me. Lord, what do I do? Give 110% into what you're doing. Matter of fact, give 150. Give everything. Say, Lord, I'm going into my place of work today. I'm going to do it for you, Lord. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to work the hardest and the best I can because I'm working for you. you Lord, when I go home today and I see my wife and kids, Lord, I want to love them the best that I can. Show me how. Lead me, Lord. If you'll confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You can say that right now. And you can say, Lord, change my life and make me like you. God bless you. Have a great time. I'll see you next time.